it's autumn uh it's late october actually so the weather has uh the weather has started to turn um the main question that people ask me at this time of year is uh adam when do i need to start moving my trees where do i move them to which trees do i move um have this conversation quite a lot at this time of year so i thought i'd do a little video on it just so uh, everybody's got the information that we uh, we give people okay so first things first then right there's no need to move everything as soon as the weather starts to turn you know you, you get people saying oh shall i put them in the greenhouse shall i bring them into the house right and we haven't actually had any frost yet all we've had is a slight change in the weather so any tropical plants that you've got outside they do need to move now because uh, a single frost is going to damage those things so by the tropicals i'm thinking about ficuses um, i'm thinking about probably sagarettias i'm thinking sarissas i'm thinking carmonas i'm thinking premnas uh, those sorts of things there's a whole big bunch of them as well but basically do a bit of research if you've got a tropical tree you don't want it to get a single frost so now is the time to move it for sure and of course those ones, right, if you move them just into a, a cold greenhouse, our, our greenhouse, we, we don't heat that, do you see what I mean? So um, it can get really quite cold in there. We can get the odd frost in there actually, particularly in the depths of winter, you know. So um, things like the ficuses, the sagarettias, the sarissas, the things we were talking about, right, probably don't want to get a single frost at all. So they're the ones that you would consider bringing into either a conservatory or into your house proper, which you wouldn't do for a lot of the other ones, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, with a lot of the uh, a lot of the temperate stuff, i.e., the non uh, the non tropical stuff, actually, giving them a bit of cold weather is a really really good thing to do. And this is probably the biggest tip that uh, that I'm going to give you during this video. Right? It's it's beneficial for the health of the tree from to actually get some cold and frosty weather. Um, so it actually helps them to to, to go dormant. Um, I tend to find right that if we take some of the uh, some of the deciduous stuff that we've got over here and we bring it into the, the greenhouse too early then there's a, there's a possibility that it can kind of hang on through the winter do you know what I mean so like it'll just it'll keep some leaves it won't have a full-on sort of period of dormancy it'll hang on through the winter and then come the spring it just doesn't seem as healthy or as vigorous it also looks really bad as well so one of my main tips then is to is to let your trees actually get some weather just to force that dormancy because it is better for the health of the trees come the next uh, come the next year now let's think about uh, some of the trees that can handle a small amount of frost but not a full on British winter. So let's have a think about those. We're talking about probably trident maples, we're talking about azaleas, uh, we're probably talking about Korean hornbeams, those sorts of things. So there's a whole bunch of trees that can handle um, a, a small amount of frost and won't be damaged by that. But on the other hand, if it gets down to sort of minus, uh, minus fives, minus sevens, and it's like that way for a prolonged period of time, then, then that can start to damage them. I'm looking at these golden larches here as well. Can you see those? Um, so yeah, they'll they'll want a little bit of frost just to force them into dormancy, but then they'll go into the into the cold greenhouse. So do keep an eye on those because you you can leave them out at the moment. You can leave them out in November, probably December. But when we get the real cold that tends to come in January and February, then it's a really good idea then to move them into the greenhouse. And actually, regarding the greenhouse, while we're thinking about that, right? When we say move them and protect them it's not generally a great idea to bring them into the into a house you know because straight away you're going from kind of cold temperatures up to really quite uh, quite warm temperatures and that can cause the trees to um, either either dry out and be damaged by the dry heat of your house or it can cause them to wake up in the middle of winter you know both things are uh, both things are certainly possible so um, the best locations really for the winter storage then are going to be um, a cold a cold greenhouse um, with a deciduous stuff possibly a shed or a garage you know Know, but tend not to bring them into the house unless you've got a really cool room in your house where you know the central heating's not banging out and uh, it's going to cause any any problems and that brings us on to the main body of the trees now so we're talking about all your native uh, British stuff we're talking about your, your your Japanese maples we're talking about your your, your pines and your junipers uh, your cotoneasters your larches you know um, all of that sort of stuff it is really quite robust it's more robust than you would you would necessarily think particularly if you're a beginner you know um, so with that sort of thing we're kind of thinking about temperatures of maybe down to minus five minus seven that sort of level you know and probably lower than that to be fair you 
you know, I think when you start to get down to minus eights, minus tens, it is time to consider moving a larger amount of stuff. But I think if you're just hovering about the zeros or down into the 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 the, the low single the low single digits. I really wouldn't worry as much as you might do when you're a beginner. I think when you've got the experience under your belt, you'll be much more confident with these things. Now, so far, we've only really talked about um, minimum uh, minimum temperature. So we sort of just said then, okay, so maybe a Trident maple starts to get damaged at about minus five, that sort of thing. Whereas maybe a, a Japanese maple is frost hardy down to, to minus 10. But it's there's, there's more to it than that, actually, because it's not just about the... Um, it's not just about the actual low temperature. Um, also, you've got to think about the duration of the cold spells as well. So, you know, like when you get to uh, January or, or February and there's kind of snow on the ground and that snow is frozen and compacted and it's going to be cold for a week or, or two weeks at a time, right? Well, that is, 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 is bad for the trees because when the, when, when the, when the, when the water inside the, uh, inside the pots freezes, right, the tree can't take any liquid up, can it? Because it's ice inside the pot. And while that doesn't necessarily hurt the roots, right, the tree dehydrates, particularly on, you know, like those blue sky, sort of sunny, sort of windy days, you know, where, the, as I say, it's blue sky, the wind's whistling through. You look outside and you think, actually, that should be warm, but then you, you really think and you realise it's absolutely Baltically cold. Well, if you're into that kind of territory for a prolonged period of time, then, as I say, it, it can be the dehydration that damages things. And therefore, even if the temperature isn't sort of ridiculously low, it, it, it does make sense to, to move things, you know. Uh, particularly small things. Bigger things are more robust, I think, than your very small things. So when you're into these kind of really kind of small pot things that we've got going on just, just down here, you know, I'd be more inclined to, to, to probably move those in the cold than I would, the, uh, I would the, the, the big dudes at the back. Do you know what I mean?